Hello dear viewers, this video is going to be dedicated to the explanation of storage technology. To be specific, I am going to explain how is the data aligned on the storage, uh, what is the partition, what is the block size, uh, how does uh, the duplication work, and this is the groundwork required to properly explain the way snapshots work in VMware and Hyper-V. So it is a bit of a basic video but it does dig into some deeper concepts such as block alignment between multiple abstraction layers and uh, I will try to make it uh, easy to understand both for those who only know basics of IT and for those who already know what it is about. So if you know what is a block size, how does the duplication function, it's just going to be a short reminder which I still find useful and hopefully you'll find it interesting as well. We are not going to be deviating uh, to explain different type of storage technology. Uh, you can imagine that right now we are working with a hard disk like magnetic drive or a solid state drive. So the only thing that matters for us is that we are talking about the storage which saves data in binary format. So we have zeros when there is nothing at all and periodic ones and when you combine one and zero you get data. So let's explore the following picture. Let's say you have a hard disk, which is actually a device which allows you to store data in binary format. And you want to save some data. When you do so, you actually save data converted to binary format, but you normally do it on your volume C or volume D or any other volume in the system. So you do not instruct the operating system to save directly on the hard disk. You use a logical concept called logical volume, LAN, or partition. So when you have disk C and you call it disk C, you actually mean volume C. And this volume is just a location from your hard disk which is allocated to keep this volume. How does the computer know where the volume is? Well, there is always a boot sector in the beginning of the hard disk which basically loads some software code which is executed on the boot and this allows you to start up your system from the hard drive and understand which partitions do you have. And the parts of that region can be MBR, master boot record, or GPT, depends on the format of the partitioning that you use. But typically there are different instructions in the beginning of the disk which tell the system what's on the rest of the disk, including your partitions. So when you save your data, it's saved in binary format. And each one or zero is a bit. And every 8 bits is a byte. So we are typically saving in bytes. That's how we measure disk space and disk usage. However, we do not save byte by byte because every write operation and every read operation suffers latency since there is a time which needs to pass for the signal to reach the hard disk through the motherboard, cables, controller, and then to come back to the CPU. So uh, there's always a delay. This is why we do reads and writes in a bunch of bytes. So this input-output amount of data is called block size or cluster size. So if you are looking at default system block size for NTFS, usually it's 4 kilobytes. You can increase it to 64 for data volumes. But basically the block size is how much data you write or read in one operation. So as a result of your write, your data gets allocated in blocks of 4 kilobyte in this case on your partition which in turn turn into the blocks on the hard disk. So the block is a logical aggregation of bytes and bits which is used for one read and one write operation and it's uniform across a single partition. So it's a property of partition. This is why if you look at this file I have here, look, the file is actually only 162 kilobytes but it takes 192 kilobytes. Why? Because if I run a fsutil command on this volume to check the block size, which is called bytes per cluster, I can see that it is 65,000 bytes, so it's 64 kilobytes. It means that every read and write operation on my E volume will always use a unit of 64 kilobytes. So my file actually takes more space on the physical hard disk than it needs. And uh, 
it means that the smaller block size you use, the more efficiently you use your hard disk. Theoretically, it means that we would always want to go with a small block size. Why would you consider a bigger block size? Well, uh, the reason is something that I mentioned in the beginning, it's latency. So every read and write operation takes time, let's say 100 milliseconds to complete. Usually it's faster, but just for the demonstration purposes, let's consider it's 100 milliseconds. So if you need to do 10 writes, it will take you one second. So if you write 40 kilobyte file with four kilobyte block, it will be 10 writes. It will take you one second to write this file. If you use 64 kilobyte block, which is more than the file size, so it wastes space, it will be only one write. So it will take only one tenth of a second. So using bigger block size will speed up disk activity, but it will create a less efficient space usage. Another thing to take into account is fragmentation. Uh, you must have heard about activity called defragmentation, but what's happening is that let's say you are writing a file and I'll try to draw it directly on the picture here. So you're writing a file and it takes some blocks, right? Then you write another file and takes another, let's say, three blocks. After that, you finish writing third file, which takes one block, and you delete your file, which took second place. And now you have a gap in blocks, right? And this gap can be used by some other file you write. Let's say I'm writing the pink file, but the file takes four blocks, so three blocks will be taken from this space, but uh, the last block will be taken from another space on the hard disk. And now the pink file is separated across the hard disk. So whenever you need to read it, you need to spin it, or you need to access it if it's not spinable in different areas, which will also slow down the operations. And defragmentation would basically reorganize blocks. So it will move your pink file and blue file blocks around and now the files are in order how they should be. So defragmentation is a service action you can take, but it takes time, so you need to consider if it makes sense or not to do that. In order to optimize the space usage by files, so you don't have to read them around the disk. And it only makes sense after a while, after you finish working uh, the disk for, let's say, a week or two weeks or month. So you would have varied amount of data and blocks all over the place. The newer systems do not really suffer it that much because they have other types of optimization. This is something I want to talk to you about next. So, to summarize, while the smaller blocks uh, provide more efficient space utilization, they increase the amount of read-write operations, so AOPS input output per second raises, and as a result, because of the latency, uh, the speed of the disk may drop. Uh, however, one more thing that they can cause, the smaller blocks, they can cause a higher rate of fragmentation because you'll have more smaller spaces around the disk to fill. So if you have big block size, your small files will be like separate chunks of data within one or a few blocks. But if you have big files in small block size, the files could be all over the place and you may have to defragment unless you use a solid state drive or something that doesn't need to spin that much. And it's like a constant war between block size versus read speed optimization. You need to decide if you are going to use the volume for small files or for big files and then optimize the special block size for that. So if you have a lot of small documents or system DLLs, smaller block size would function better. That's why I keep four kilobytes on my system drive, but on the volume with my videos, documents, uh, which take a lot of space and games and uh, some database servers, I use bigger block size just to optimize the disk speed. And I don't worry that much about the space lost of a few kilobytes. Um, one more technology that you should be aware of is called deduplication. So what is going to happen if two of the blocks are the same data, which can happen if, let's say, you have multiple files of the same type. So you may have 2,000 or 3,000 uh, video files or 
Microsoft Word files. They would all start with the same header and then uh, the contents will differ. It means that a lot of blocks would technically be the same binary data. Well, if two blocks are with the same content, they could only theoretically take one block space on a real hard disk. This is called deduplication. It, it's a feature which should be supported by your partition type. So, for example, NTFS started to support deduplication from the version introduced in version of Windows 2012. So, on Windows Server 2012, you can enable this feature and you will save space. The upside is obviously that you are going to store much less physical data than you have logical data. You will actually perform better than with compression, which is also an algorithm which simply reduces total data size. The downside is that in case of deduplication, you can imagine the fragmentation is already a given because your files will be all over the place. So you would want to use it in case of faster drives or if you don't worry about the speed as much. And one more thing, with deduplication enabled, uh, you must then later use this file system with operating system which supports it. So if you would use a standard NTFS without the duplication enabled, you could use this disk even with Linux machines later. Or at least you could access this data directly. And if you do have deduplicated data, it can only be recoverable by the system which supports the same level of duplication. And even in Microsoft Windows, with the new versions of server, uh, the deduplication driver gets updated. So there may be no forward compatibility or backwards compatibility in some cases. So you always would want to basically exit this data from a server which has the same level of uh, operating system, the same build that supports the same driver of deduplication. Otherwise, it's a very useful feature. And if the deduplication is done on the volume level, which means it's in the property of your volume C, it is a software deduplication. As I said, it's a feature of specific partition. However, some storage devices like hard disks themselves can have this feature inbuilt. So while in the volume, the files will not be deduplicated, the blocks will not be deduplicated. Once they are saved to the physical disk, the control roller would spot similar blocks and write them only once. And such devices basically have a different abstraction layer between your partition and the real hardware. Usually such devices are not very cheap. Examples of those are different HP storage devices like StoreOnce, uh, EMC that, that domain with DD Boost and a few other storages. So typically uh, it is a special feature which gets sold by the vendor and it increases the price of the storage. But you do get a device which can store almost two times more data than it physically has. Of course, uh, with the drawback that it will take a bit longer to read and in some cases it will take much longer to read if you store a lot of data and it's highly deduplicated. The process of reading deduplicated data is called rehydration. So rehydration time to actually find the blocks and pull them and provide them to the operating system may take some time which will delay the read operation. Now let's look at the role this knowledge plays in virtualization. Basically, we have another layer of complexity added. So whatever we just discussed applies to hard disk, which in case of virtualization applies to virtual hard disk, the MDK file. You see, it's the top part of the picture. And below <coughs> we have data store, which actually stores the virtual hard disk. So inside of virtual hard disk, we have bytes of data, which represent real hard disk allocation. And uh, since it's just a file, it exists on a different partition, which is data store. Usually it's VMFS in case of VMware. And this data store is the partition on a real hard disk. So basically everything we talked about applies, but there is another step of block allocation. So if everything would be of the same block size and it would be aligned perfectly, there would be no questions. It would function the same way. But typically the block size on VMware is different. By default, I think it's one megabyte. And the blocks can also be misaligned. So the beginning of the block in the guest operating system would be different from the beginning of the block on the host operating system in data store. As the result, the total fragmentation could 
be affected. And also, you could change only one block in the guest and could trigger the change of two blocks on the host storage level, which would double the amount of changes to the disk. So that's why it's a good idea to format your partition and align guest operating system blocks properly. There are a few articles from memory. If you're administrator, you can look up how to align VMware virtual disks and you would get step-by-step -step instruction. But this is a concept which should be available and known by you. Otherwise, the data store itself can also have the duplication appliance under it. It will probably decrease performance of your virtual machines, but it's something that can exist. And once we start talking about snapshots and backups, the same concepts will apply because snapshots will be also operating these storage blocks, data blocks, and backups will be reading these blocks of data. So the backup is not going to read byte by byte, it's going to read in chunks of data from your storage disk. This should be all for the concept explanation. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment. And I didn't ask you before, but if you would like to learn more, like and subscribe. It will likely show my channel to more people, and I would be happy to engage in assistance if you need any help with this. Otherwise, you can look forward to the next video about snapshots, where this knowledge of disk formatting block size will be applicable directly. And I'll teach you how the snapshots work, uh, about the concept and about the specifics of data allocation when you take and remove snapshots. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you the best day and we'll see you soon. Goodbye.